Hello, everyone. Welcome to MIF 2021 Creative Business Webinar, The Design Trend 2022. My name is Hani, and I'll be your MC for today. Before we start, I would like to mention some housekeeping rules for this webinar. All microphone and video of attendees have been muted. If you have any questions to ask our speakers, do list them down at the Q&A box. We will have a Q&A session after all speakers have presented. If there's any internet disruption during this webinar, please be patient and try to sign in again. Without further ado, I'll hand over the floor to Ms. Karen for the welcome remarks. Ms. Karen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Hani. Good afternoon, good morning to all the attendees who signed in to today's uh, webinar series. Today is the second day of uh, MIF online exhibition, MIF Friendivers. So today's uh, topic is about the design trend of uh, 2022. So we have honored to, in, to have uh, our exhibitors and uh, uh, our designers uh, and uh, Dr. Eric Leong join us in today's uh, sessions to discuss about what will happen to the design of uh, furniture after the pandemic. So uh, thank you for you taking time to join us today. And uh, if you have not registered to visit our online exhibition, please do so to register yourself at www.miffuniverse.com. So without further ado, I'll pass on this uh, floor to our moderator, Dr. Eric Leung. Eric, the floor is yours. Eric, you have to unmute yourself. Hi, <laughs> thank you, Karen. Okay, very excited today. Okay, uh, very good afternoon from Malaysia uh, because I, I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, our these are what we call it the visitor, uh, online visitor already registered from all over the world. Thank you very much. And also a uh, big hello to all the fellow Malaysian uh, interior design or also design students uh, because I see a lot of uh, you guys already registered uh, to come to listen to our these uh, creative business webinar series. Actually, uh, this is our third, uh, third uh, these are MIFF creative business webinar series uh, uh, since uh, COVID-19 started. Uh. So uh, a blink of eyes, so already two years passed by. Uh, we, we covered the topic uh, from you know, uh, the, these uh, new consumer behavior to the new normal prepare, uh, all our these uh, exhibitors, all the market, uh, all the designer, all the manufacturer to be ready for this uh, post COVID-19. We thought it will be over very soon, but uh, we never know that it lasts for another year. So which is uh, this year, and like, we are happy now because uh, you know, most of the nation and uh, most of the country, they already start opening up these, uh, their border already and also the market already opened up. As we say in Malaysia, I think everybody is so excited, uh, but we have to uh, live in this new normal, yeah? Uh, and of, of course, uh, you know, uh, MIF have be become a leading, uh, what we call that, uh, market leading uh, exhibition because uh, we need to prepare, yeah? Prepare everybody to get ready for the new year, uh, which is a 2022. That's why uh, today these uh, MIFF Creative Business uh, Webinar Series, we are going to talk about the Design Trend 2022. But beside that, I also, well, uh, because it seems that uh, we got these uh, very, very, very uh, distinguished uh, three uh, speakers uh, with the uh, vast of experience in this industry, right? I also will ask them about the color trends, about the economy outlook for 2022, uh, and also the these are uh, uh, some challenges uh, and also the very important one is a new requirement uh, for the this uh, post-COVID-19 era because uh, I believe a lot of designers out there, a lot of manufacturers out there, you also wanted to know what the market want, what is it all about, right? Uh, so all these ones, stay tuned. After three of them present ready, then we are having this uh, forum discussion. Then I will throw all these questions, the question you want to know one, then I will throw it to them and uh, let them guide us uh, uh, to this one and prepare ourselves for the 2022. Uh. So uh, really looking forward for this uh, forum. But before that, let me introduce uh, three of very uh, special our uh, these uh, speaker. Okay, first one, Mr. Peter. Peter actually is a general manager uh, of the, this uh, market development for this uh, source by Net, uh, private limited uh, from Singapore. Currently, 
Peter is not in Singapore. Peter is far away. Good morning, Peter. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Eric. Yeah. And thank Peter you very is... much for the introduction. <laughs> Peter is actually in Dubai now. Uh, uh, and Peter uh, has more than 10 years uh, experience in this uh, furniture industry. And like he's been uh, sourcing furniture uh, around the world. Yeah, and also like he has a insightful sharing session with us later on uh, to tell us all about you know about sourcing furniture, what kind of like services sourced by net are going to provide to all the buyers. Because uh, I believe in this uh, uh post-COVID era, right, it's quite challenging for a lot of buyers uh around the world right, to actually to source the furniture because like uh, it kind of like a new normal uh kind of living already now. So later on, Peter will share more with us. And of course, our second speaker, we have our water, <laughs> our very own Malaysia furniture designer. And also, uh, we, we, we usually, we call him Guru. Lah, huh? So later on, uh, okay, okay, he's appeared already. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. What are Thanks your points? Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. Walter also like uh, is a mentor for this our uh this uh, millennial at design uh, at MIFF 2018 and 19. Uh. So uh he's a mentor for the this uh, what we call that the pattern banya uh, <laughs> or the designer in Malaysia called pattern banya. Uh, I'm not like I'm not like teasing him. Uh. Uh, Walter also the this uh, advisor design advisor for uh, this uh, Sydney based uh, furniture design uh, company as well. Uh. So like uh, also vast experience today. Uh, Walter is going to share with us about the circular economy. Uh. What is it to do with design trend uh, 2022? Uh, then uh, he will tell you more on that. Uh. Okay, <laughs> stay tuned for that. Okay, our third speaker, very young uh, uh, design entrepreneur. We have our Miss Bocha, uh, Mr. Bochang. <laughs> Hello. So Bochang uh, is our very own uh, this MIF, uh, FDC uh, winner as well. Uh, so uh, he is, uh, I, I would say, uh, he is the busiest person in the world and also the most hardworking person in the world. Uh, sending me message uh, in midnight. <laughs> so I, to I told you, I said I want to sleep first. Uh. Okay, so Bocha actually running two companies. Uh, two company. One is called Paperwork Studio and also the, called, uh, the other one is a furniture design studio, right? Called Basicology, right? Uh, and also, uh, Bocha is a very good, uh, what we call that, the Malaysia design movement initiator. Uh, because uh, I think he initiating uh, this um, uh, the Malaysia design, uh, the Malaysian design, original Malaysian design in this uh, millennia at design at uh, MIFF. Uh, okay, so later on, uh, Bocha is going to share with us uh, because uh, I think uh, during this period of time, right, he, uh, this young entrepreneur uh, really did a lot of research. Uh, so he's going to share with us what is the in thing, what is the uh, most, uh, what we call that, uh, the focus point uh, will be in this design industry because I uh, he as a furniture designer and also interior designer going to share with us uh, his point of view on the design design trend for 2022. Okay, so uh, can't wait already. So let me introduce first speaker, Peter, uh, to share uh, his uh, this uh, presentation to us. Peter, over to you. Thank you again, Dr. Eric, for your kind introduction and for inviting Source Planet and me to be part of this webinar. Really appreciate it. Um, please allow me to take a little bit of your time to introduce SourcePyNet to those of you who doesn't already know us. And uh, SourcePyNet was founded about, uh, and where is my PPT? I can't see that. There it is. So we were founded uh, about 20 years ago by three senior managers from uh, at uh, IKEA. And their idea was to develop a more commercial offer focused on customers' individual needs and leveraged an expensive network of suppliers. And that has worked because today we are one of the leading uh, furniture suppliers, especially when it comes to OEM and ODM. We have a vast experience of working with carefully selected uh, skilled and reliable manufacturers all over Asia, Eastern Europe, and Brazil. Our vision is to become <clears throat> the world's first choice of partner for developing, sourcing great value furniture and home products. To do that and to become that, we need to be a trusted developing and sourcing consultant partner and uh, be delightful to our customers, to inspire confidence, to differentiate from all others, 
to nurse successful relationships. At Sourcebanet, we are very passionate about uh, design, producing furniture and developing furniture. No doubt about that. Uh, everybody who knows us uh, know that we have developed solutions for all rooms in the house with a bath, uh, breath range of design, price and quality levels, all made functional, practical and built to last. We are a dynamic product uh, development company and are offering innovative solutions which commercially satisfies our customers. We have a team of in-house and external designers which create a solid platform in proactive and on-trend production development with the attention to details and hand-on production experience. As we have strategically placed office around the world, we are able to support our customers and being hands-on during production. Quality plays a very big role for Source by Net. I'm sure the companies who work with us before knows that quality is in our blood and uh, we are all in Source by Net accountable for maintaining the high quality. To secure the highest level of quality, we have trained engineers and inspectors physically placed in the factories. We are increasingly focusing on inline inspection to minimize risk of delay and to minimize costs. On key lines, we invest in technical production management experts to help the factories to set up <clears throat> their lines in the most efficient way. And to make sure that it all comes together, we have an extensive in-house testing facility and reinforced with external tests. Last but not least, we are ethical and compliance committed. This means that we strive to protect the environment, improve working conditions, and ensure fair treatment of individuals based on their beliefs, history, and culture. In all geographics, we evaluate our suppliers and then invest time in proactively coaching them to find ways to reduce the environmental impact of the production process and to improve the workers' conditions of the labor force. We have an advanced timber tracking system. All our products are REACH compliant. The majority of the factories we are working with are BSCI satisfied. It's important for us that we make a difference. So as I said, we have offices all over the world, 28 in fact, in total, um, equally more or less split between sourcing offices and sales offices. Here are some of the products we are showing at uh, our virtual booth. The first one is range number six. It's a recycled pane, uh, pane uh, and metal ranges. The pane are recycled from old pallets. Second one is Carly Dining. It's out of concrete, solid oak. Fourth one is Live Edge. Oh, sorry, third one, Live Edge. It's made out of solid acacia. And the last one I want to share now is Trist Bedroom. It's made from uh, solid oak and uh, MDF plywood. So for more information and to follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook uh, to be updated on our latest development, uh, please visit us our virtual booth at MIFF. Thank you so much for listening uh, to my presentation and I'll hand it back to Dr. Eric. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay. Uh, Peter, I, I can see like from your this, uh, presentation, right? Your furniture is kind of like very minimum design, very, you know, uh, I would call it AG. Yeah? So is yeah. it all actually developed by in-house or like is a customer requirement or both you also do it? It's, it's a big combination of both. Uh, as, I, as I said, we do have in-house designers. We've got three in-house designers and also working with external designers to create. This is not representative of all what we are producing and making. It's a, what we are showing at my uh, MIFF uh, to inspire people. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and also, I, I, I understand that because the other day when I learned about source by net, right, I'm so, I'm, I, I feel like, you know, nowadays, the buyer's uh, job is getting easier already because uh, if by engaging uh, source by net, right, they literally do not need to worry from design up to the quality control, correct? Right? That is correct. We, we try to take the hassle out of... Uh, product development, designing, and production. That's our main focus. 
Yes, because I, as a designer, right, that is the toughest part, right, you know, the QC part, you know, to make sure everything is like the manufacturer, you know, make according to our design spec and so on. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So thank you so much, Peter. Later on, uh, we were having the Q&A. So now uh, I would like to welcome our next speaker, uh, Walter. So Walter is going to share with us the circular economy uh, on the this uh, furniture design. Uh, so I... Uh, so I'm, I'm equally curious as you, uh, what is it to do with the, the, these uh, design trend, right? So, uh, Walter, over to you. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can see you. <laughs> yes. Oh, you can see me and hear me, right? Because I can't see myself. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can see your presentation as well. Oh, okay. okay. Ah, now, now, uh, okay, this low. Uh, we always have this issue when we have the webinar. Okay, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, as you know, my name is Walter. Today, I'm actually want, going to talk about circular economy. Uh, it is actually uh, related to Lanina. It's, that is what happened now. Okay. Uh, it's going to be very cold. Okay, it's going to be a very, very cold winter. Okay, because I used to, uh, uh, because I have office in, in, in China. Okay, normally in Guangdong province. Okay, normally uh, uh, in Guangdong, winter only will come uh, like December. But now it is only October. The winter has uh, uh, reached uh, uh, Guangdong and it's very cold now. It's about 15 degrees now. Okay, so I uh, want to take you for a ride on this circular economy. I will take you guys circling, circling your head, thinking about, uh, use your, your mind and awareness to think about what are we going to do to help our mother. Our mother means our mother earth, okay? Later, I will always say uh, our mother, my mother. So you guys should be understand our characters in advance, okay? Okay, me as a furniture designer, I also teach part-time in a, a few local universities in Malaysia. So uh, then I will always, okay, as my promise, I always take my students to uh, design factories. So because the thing that I normally teach is actually uh, uh, practical because I myself uh, own factories, factory in Forsan. So mainly producing outdoor furniture and wooden furniture. Okay, so I'm a third generation carpenter. So uh, uh, let's talk about the subject today. Okay, I'm not so important. The important is actually how to save our mother. Okay, so what is actually a, a circular economy? Okay, we compare to our traditional normally what we are doing now, manufacturing is a linear economy. Okay, one line. Yeah, you take, you make, and dispose. This is what happened now. Okay, so what I actually uh, uh, my sharing today is actually create an awareness to manufacturers and others to think when we use. Okay, when you produce. Okay, we have to make a circle and then make sure that the product and the materials that we use can be circling and reuse again. So. If, if we still continue on linear economy, this actually will happen, okay? This is the, the research I got last year in Malaysia. Maybe due to the lockdown, so a lot of people order food panda, grab food, all those packing of plastic, bubble wrap, all those things will throw. And then we, okay, only in Malaysia, I'm not sure about other world, Okay, I think maybe there'll be more. So throw away, okay, 1.17 kilograms of waste every day, okay? Every day, each of us, then we'll create this uh, uh, a challenge. So we have uh, a place with full of uh, garbage. So this will create big issue, okay? for this uh, uh, landfill or this rubbish thing. Okay, now. Okay, you have to find out why okay, uh, we produce. What is the purpose we produce? Okay, uh, 
used to be actually uh, uh, reproduced so the manufacturing, manufacturing and factory can earn money. Okay, there is actually always a way, several ways to actually can produce and make money, and at the same time helping our mother, Mother Earth. Yeah. So actually, this is actually uh, uh, what we call a thinking. Okay, the picture shown is actually uh, my friend work. Okay. He's going to collect this actually a chopping board. Okay. No big chopping board that they don't want uh this cook don't want to use no more. So he collect this chopping board and we work it to become as a side table or become a very big okay uh, uh what we call stool for somebody to sit on to do meditation. Yeah. Okay now. Uh when we talk about uh uh, uh, manufacturing, okay, we need material to produce, okay. The material is normally that we use is actually uh, now. The new one, I think, uh, is actually uh, for wood material, is actually FFC, BFC 75, okay. So it's better that way because FFC have a very good system on the wood when you plant, when you chop down, they have a system to sustainably again and they replant back again. And then after 10, maybe 20 or 30 years again, they will come back to this and then they can uh, 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 chop down the tree and use the tree okay, for manufacturing of furniture and other things. Okay? The other one is actually composite material. Okay? So we have a WBC, the wood plastic composite. Okay? Uh, it's like a mix, so mixture of a wood fiber and plastic okay, to become a wood material. Okay, SPC stone plastic material is actually stone, okay, mixed with sand and plastic, then become uh, mainly they use it to become a floorboard and then recycle plastic, uh, ocean plastic, and then also can go to get to really clean uh, old woods. Okay, some of the uh, all those old house, an old warehouse that is, they use uh, uh, wood, okay, wood columns we can collect that to make. Uh, to reuse it and to make it um, uh, as a material. Okay. Actually, uh, okay. This is actually a uh, rice husk. This is actually in Malaysia. Okay. Since I was born in Kedah, the north of uh, Malaysia. Okay. Kedah is actually very famous of uh, rice. Okay, planting rice. Okay. I actually uh, seen this when I was young. They used the rice husk. To make boards, and luckily I found this factory not so far from my house. It's actually in Shala. They use this actually um, uh, what we call the rice husk fiber, compress it, uh, mix it with some uh, what we call E O E zero resin, and become a board. Okay, this actually can be used as a floorboard, floor decking, okay, and wood as well. Okay, uh, since I have to have a lot of time. So I can't share what they are making. They're actually making what we call outdoor pergolas in this rice house as well, okay? So actually circular economy or circular uh, furniture design is actually uh, uh, for you to redesign, okay? Your business model, okay? You must also always think about when you design, the product that you design is actually uh, easily recycled. It's actually more than recycled, okay? Uh, can be repurposed, okay, can be reused in the future, okay. So, when you, it's actually like something like uh, when you design a furniture, okay, the component is actually can be disassembled, reassembled, and retrofit again. Like the front leg, when it is actually broken, we can take out and then put it back again, okay. And then, uh, since we are actually very trendy now, furniture, furniture market is actually very trendy, so. Maybe you don't like the color now. Later, maybe uh, uh, Mr. Peter will uh, uh, introduce uh, some uh, uh, what we call the color trend of next year. So we can change, take up the lake, change to different color, and maybe the seat to a different color. Okay. Now, next. Okay, now, like just now I said, uh, we can use it. Okay. Uh, reuse and then we pick parts. Okay, this is actually the first version of the uh, design that I designed at the home student. 
and actually uh, the, the improved version is actually on the way. I can't show it to you yet. Hopefully next time I have opportunity to show you uh, actually the uh, improved version. Okay, I call it the uh, X okay, version of this kind, this number. Okay, so it's actually, it will make in wood, okay, in Acacia wood, because we in Malaysia uh, can actually uh, get uh, Acacia wood from Sarawak. So we are actually uh, uh, going for a, a new design. Hopefully, can show you guys in the future, maybe next year in the furniture show. Yeah. So the principle of actually see circulative economy is actually to outlast the waste. Okay. Reduce the waste to the minimum. Okay. And reduce the pollution. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now another solution is actually um, uh, rental or buyback service. Okay. As we know, we actually buy handphone. A lot of young people now buy handphone every year. Okay, handphone actually create okay uh, rubbish. Okay, once when you buy a mobile phone, they give you a box, many papers inside. They give you a earphone. They give you a charger. Are you using a lot of plastic? Okay, so uh, I think recently uh, Apple was will sell their mobile phone without their adapter, okay? And in EU, actually set a new rule that their charger, okay, uh, with actually only one USB uh, uh, of uh, a wire, okay? They already said, they already told like uh, Apple that they only use a type C USB for all of the phone, okay? Actually, this is to reduce Okay, uh, uh, throw away. So I'm not sure what's next. This is what I read from the news. Actually, that's it in Europe. Okay, now, so this is actually uh, uh, the, the business that we do rental furniture. Okay, so rental furniture is actually the, the easiest actually defense to become uh, a circular economy because once you rent, you can take back and reward. Maybe the parts is broken. Okay then they can uh, use it again and rent it out again. So this is actually another one. And the buyback service, I mean something like uh, in Malaysia, that is actually a cold wave water filter. They did actually quite well on this circular economy. Uh, they can actually rent to you or maybe buy back from you, take back the uh, water filter, change some part, reward again, okay? Then uh, um, send it back to rental or maybe sell it back again in the market. Yeah. So this is actually what happened now. Somebody is actually doing it now. So my, my advice is have a look of this kind of uh, circular economy idea. So you will be advantaged because uh, uh, EU is actually setting up this kind of uh, uh, policy. Okay, this is actually the stand that I designed for my customer in Sydney, okay? You see all those metal racking, metal racking, metal racking, it's actually uh, has been used since two zero, has been since six, five, six years, okay? So every time we design uh, the space, we use this metal racking back again and again and again. So it's actually to minimize, actually to throw away, throw away, and then you know what to do. Or, or, or also in me. They actually use all those plywood to uh, produce their booth after the, the show. I'm not sure where they are going to throw away all those booth uh, plywood. Okay, so this is actually create uh, a, a rubbish that's very hard to uh, settle. Okay, so now, like I said just now, you have actually want to uh, close the loop. Okay, they actually step. Okay. By uh, year, I think year 2030, they actually want to, uh, 3040 or 3050, they actually want to have a, a zero carbon emission in the, their member's country. Yeah, so so this is actually, I don't want to go details. Maybe Bo Chiang will go into detail, something like but in, in a more detail. So later, you will see some of the sharing from Bo Chiang. So again, okay, what, what might change Everything will change. When your mindset is actually 
when you talk about stable economy, your mindset is very, the most important thing. The mindset has to change. Okay, material change. Just now I said some materials finishing. Okay, like my I also do project because I my factories produce a custom made furniture. I do project in a fine style resort hotel in Sabah. Now all those uh, uh, wooden furniture that I use now is actually uh, an oil finish oil finish product. Okay, I use actually a brand called Osmo uh, oil to finish my furniture. Okay, so this uh, Osmo produced uh, holistic oil is actually a mixture of sunflower, uh, linseed, and some, some plant oils to finish off right, on the furniture, okay? The assembly and the packaging. So we actually, when we order, uh, we buy from uh, uh, orders, uh, DHL or whatever orders, they'll give you bubble wrap. So this is actually a big issue. Bubble wrap you throw away, you create more, more rubbish. Okay. But in China, they are very, doing very good now in China. I think the SF Sun Fong, okay, actually come up with a, a plastic bubble wrap that actually non-poisonous and can be eaten, but not for physical to eat. And you put inside a mouth and you can eat it and it's not poisonous. Okay. So uh, don't go and purposely eat the plastic, yeah. But it's actually say uh, uh, tell you that the packing uh, uh, is actually not poisonous. And China is actually uh, uh, very strong in this circular economy. I remember about uh, I think 13, uh, 13 years ago, I went to China. They already start uh, don't give up plastic bag anymore. If you don't use a plastic bag, you have to pay money. In Malaysia, they only start uh, only two three years ago. That, uh, no plastic, so you have to carry your own uh, recycle. So design will change, okay? Design for assembly, like I said just now, when you design uh, your furniture, such so easy to actually component has you can can disassemble, reassemble, okay? And then uh, design for service, okay? Design for long lasting, okay? Not like a dollar store when you buy something from plastic, cheap, and then. When it is broken down, you throw away. So this is actually a not good for the environment. Okay. So business model also change. Okay. For, uh, export market reduced to maybe, uh, and then due to the, the what we call the container fees, and then freight uh, freight freight charges is expensive. No, it's actually uh, create uh, the countries are buying uh, locally or maybe uh, nearer to their countries. Okay. So OEM and ODM all become okay, very, very uh, different thing. Okay. So uh, we as a designer, okay, when we start to design everything, so we have to think okay, of everything that is designed and for the factory to produce is actually helping our mother earth, not harming them. Okay. So uh, I know this is actually quite painful for manufacturers to change, but at least in this sharing of mine, I'm actually sh uh, sharing an awareness for you guys to consider what you are going to do okay, in the uh, future. Okay, So uh, I remember last time when I was young, Okay, I, we will hear some uh, ethnic Indian carry two big basket shouting, Bottle, bottle, okay. Actually, in English, it's actually bottle, okay. They collect this uh, gentleman, collect this uh, glass bottle, okay, recycle it, take it back, okay. They buy from you for one bottle for uh, uh, maybe five, ten cents. Last time, my time, five, ten cents is a lot of money. So they clean it again, and then they sell the bottle back to, okay, because some of the bottle are actually a soya sauce. Okay, they sell back to the soya sauce factories and they reuse back, okay? And then stick back the labor, reuse back and sell it back to us, okay? Now, we don't see this anymore, okay? When you use the uh, uh, glass bottle, you just throw it away. And that's it. Or I'm not sure when the, this uh, glass bottle will end up to, but uh, maybe it will be end up in the, in the rubbish, okay? Uh, so my, Actually, uh, 
last word is try not to produce when you can't recycle, reuse, and repurpose. Okay, uh, it may be a bit harsh for the manufacturer, but it's actually uh, uh, creating awareness. Okay, uh, I think I end my uh, presentation now. I'm passing this back to uh, Dr. Eric. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, uh, Walter. Walter, I think I think it's a very challenging um, world for for everybody, yeah. Because yes. we, we we designer, we supposed to create the needs, uh. That means that we we supposed to design something, you know, for people to use it. But again, the world is changing, uh, so challenging now. Uh, you know, we need to create something that actually benefit back to our mother nature. Uh. Otherwise, sooner or later, we are be finished uh, because. Uh, I think yes. climate change is a big issue now. So later on, we will talk more about that. And also, very inter interestingly, uh, I received a Q and uh, a, a question from Australia later on to uh, ask you about this topic as well. Oh, yeah? good, very good, very good. So later, when our these are Q and A sections, so I will I will forward this question to you. So, uh, but at the meantime, right? I think it's important for for I think all the manufacturer to understand this issue as well, lah, because I. I think as men as uh, Walter mentioned just now, uh, very important because it's quite painful for a manufacturer, uh, manufacturer to change the production line right now because I know the previously the initial investment is quite a lot. But if we don't start now, uh, so it will be you will be lack of competitive really. You see, EU did a good job. EU come out all these guidelines uh, for a lot of uh, manufacturer to to actually to follow. You look at the big company, uh, the, the the biggest tech company in the world, Apple also got to follow. No charges for iPhone, yeah, for the new <laughs> iPhone. But new iPad mini got charges now. So if you need charges, really, yeah. then buy the iPad mini. <laughs> okay, but they did their, they did their step as well. Like, because uh, previously, all the Apple product, right, they will be sealed with the plastic, uh, this uh, transparent plastic shade. Like. So now they actually need to paper, like, but still uh, the paper can be recycled. So this is one of the good initiative. Like, but we need time. We also need the effort to change our lifestyle lah, for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Walter. Right. Now yeah. I want to uh, invite uh, this uh, Bo Chang to, to do his uh, sharing session as the interior designer point of view to look at uh, you know, uh, what we can do uh, to make a better future. Okay. Bo Chang, over to you. <laughs> I think your mic is not on. We can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear. Probably you want to unplug your this uh, earphone. Ah yes, we can hear. Um, uh, can hear? Yes, yes, good, good. Can hear. All you right, so sorry for All the right. technical issue. No problem. All right, so um, a very good day to everybody. My name is Bo Chang. I am a design entrepreneur, and the topic I will be talking about today will be the new normal, which is the one we are experiencing now and the new design thinking. And for new, for design thinking, basically it's not just for designer. So the information and research that I'm going to share is going to serve as a foundation for our planning for the comings, be it in design solutions, business solutions, marketing solutions, manufacturing solution, and so on. And what's the coming? And before we going into the design thinking, we need to know what has happened, what is happening, and probably we will be able to foresee what is going to happen. And there will be two global trends that I will be touching on. The first one will be the social behavior, and the second one will be the implementation of science, technology, and innovations into our design. So the number one, this is the article that shared by the um, scientists last year. And let's verify this. And as you see, the intermittent social distancing may be necessary into 2022. And we are now entering 2022. So this information is verified. And what's next? 
and this situation could occur as far into the future as 2025 or possibly as late as 2024. So now we have the overall um, ideas on the timeline already. And let's look at the global trend number one, the social behavior. As far as we know, one of the major change into human lifestyle is probably working from home or we will say working remotely. And we know that a lot of people are actually losing jobs. However, on the other side, this is the article that recently been published by Time magazine. And this is all about the great resignations and what happened. More than 4.2 million of Americans quit their jobs in August, which is very, very recent. And it's very ironic is people are losing job and there are also a lot of people are uh, going to quit. This is because the burnout, but burnout is not categorized as a medical diagnosis, but it is possible to overlap with physical and mental health issue. And when we always have a problem and we always have a solution, and let's see what has the world do to this great resignations. So what I would say is a four working day weeks. And this idea is currently being tried at Scotland, Iceland, Japan, Sweden, and Germany. And during this trial area, these are the summarize of the data that they have found. The number one will be for more time for yourself. People are looking for a more sustainable lifestyle. People are able to have more time to prep their own meal, uh, spend quality time with the family. And the second one will be less stress and become more productive. Microsoft actually already did this trial in Japan. And the data and outcomes show the productivity increased by 40%. And in the ecological perspective, and once we only have four days of working week, so eventually there will be fewer traffic and it reduces energy consumption and also the greenhouse gas emissions. So the key in this social behavior response is people are moving forwards to a more sustainable lifestyle and probably a healthier lifestyle. And the next one, the rising of dark stores. Dark store means speedy grocery delivery. This is um, a documentary covered by Wall Street Journal in US. And dark stores are being set up in a lot of neighborhoods. There are over billions of dollars are invested in this business during the last two years. So what we can actually um, understand from here is that People are looking for more convenience. People want to save more time. And I would say people will be very dependent on the ease that provided by the advancement of the technologies. So the next exciting part will be the implementation of science, technology, and innovations into our design thinking. So we call it STI in short. The number one is definitely the STI thinking in design aspect. So this research is on uh, far UV technologies, a company in uh, US. They create and provide disinfection equipment and services. And if you look at the middle part, the Krypton disinfection lights is their products. And what can it do? It disinfects viruses, bacteria, and fungi in occupied spaces. And see, it's mitigating the emerging threat of COVID-19. So this technology actually is not very new, uh, but previously it's mostly used in the aerospace. But currently, they are the company that started to commercialize it and use it in a commercial space and also residentials. So this is something that we could actually Think of if we are going to apply technology and innovations into our design solution in the future. So the next one is, this one was the one I have shared in my previous webinar. now. Search Ferrari develops fabric technology using silver that can eliminate coronaviruses by up to 99.5%. From a designer point of view, um, do, you, do, you, do you agree that there is so much potential within these products. Is it possible to become a safer and provide more trust to our customer and become more aesthetically appealing products? Yes, 
I would say this would be a very huge potential. And the next perspective, while we are doing our design thinking, we definitely have to consider or must think of the STI in our manufacturing. So before that, we have to understand these facts. So this article is about forest loss could make diseases like COVID-19 more likely. And what is the global issue here? It will be that deforestation could lead to a rise of the occurrence of a diseases like now. So deforestation has become one of the most um, uh, severe global issue at the moment. And let's look at this. There are always two parts of innovation when it comes into uh, manufacturing. Innovations of products and over innovations of process. There is no right or wrong about these two, but both of them has to complement each other. Most of the manufacturers in Malaysia, I would say, probably focus more on the innovations of products. And in this innovation of products, um, we are encouraged to explore more non-wood materials like uh, metal, plastic, composite, and why? If we already know about the global issue is on the deforestations, so what we can foresee or plan ahead is probably in the future, they will be more on the lesser on the wood materials products. So here comes the global uh, trends uh, kicks in. So the innovation of process definitely is to develop new technology and process innovations. Here's some of the example. Now lab is based in Germany. So um, they unveiled this aluminum stool form from a 3D printed um, algorithmic uh, mold. So here they're actually preventing a lot of waste during the manufacturing process. So this is also another very important point while doing our critical thinking. And what is Daniel say? Daniel is one of the co-founder and see in 2011, everyone was laughing at me and now everyone is going into it. It is exactly 10 years ago from now. And he said he began focusing on additive manufacturing, laser cutting and so on. So from my point of view, I believe additive manufacturing will be another advantage that would actually um, uh, complement furniture industry. And this is another example. So if you realize the article is being published on 2015. So a few years ago in Germany, they are already going into this kind of solutions. And you see what he said, you have much more function within just one piece because of the technique that was used. The technique is printed technique and additive uh, manufacturing and it actually uses fewer resources. Okay, last but not least will be the science technology innovation in sustainability part. I believe just now uh, Walter and also Peter has mentioned quite a lot relating to sustainability, but what we can understand here is the global issue. What is the global trend? What is the things that globally are facing now? And this is it. The world has an e-waste problems. And you see at over 10 million tons per year, e-waste is the fastest growing waste stream in Europe. Like I mentioned earlier, when there is a problem, people will definitely come up with a solution. And this is the solution that we can look into it. This is an article that being published recently. The EU is giving citizens the right to repair electronics. So what we can understand here, they are actually going for more durable. They want um, to prolong and the, the, they are focusing more on the longevity of the product itself. And what else can support these facts is some political leaders agree, which means it could become a regulations and being applied into the policy. And the second one, we always know Europe is one of the largest market in the world and globally furniture industry is always influenced by Italy and Germany, including um, uh, Malaysia also influenced by them. So if the world largest market is doing so, what do you think we are going to do? All right, so from an e eco uh, ecological side will be the e-waste is seen as the most harmful consumer waste now. 
And what do you think if the world leading technology company like Apple will do? Apple actually also launched its repair program to support new initiative on this. So they're actually giving up their parts, tools, training, service guide to the to perform a variety of out of warranty repair. So they are also encouraging people to actually fix their electronics without throwing it away. And from a furniture industry, how can we use these informations to implement, to embed that into our design and provide a solutions to the world? So uh, in conclusions, by knowing all these informations, the global trends and how um, the social behavior evolved, how the science, technology and innovations evolve, we will be able to generate a better design thinking and solutions in a lot of aspects. So what I would say design trend for 2022 year is definitely making the world a better place. And I believe this is not only just a short term and I believe this will go up to 10 to 20 years and we will definitely always be on trend. So thank you very much. That's uh, so far my sharing. All right, thank you, Bo Chang. Okay, looks like <laughs> looks like uh, our designer also having a very challenging uh, uh, world here uh, because uh, you know we, we need to design something that uh, taking care of Mother Earth at the same time uh, make the make the world better place. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. and also like I think I think uh, I think a lot of tech company actually because uh, I think as Walter said right our tech company actually created a lot of ways as well. So they are actually trying their very best uh, to, to, to come with these uh, all the initiative, the program uh, to help to uh, save the world a little bit. Uh. But I think our, this in the, I mean, uh, our furniture industry also one of uh, these uh, biggest industry as well, as we well during this uh, uh, great lockdown period uh, uh, all, all over the world, right? So everybody uh, stay at home, work from home, you know. So then they kind of like noticing how actually they oh a lot of things are shortages and they try and buy more and more. So I think uh, this is a very good time for us to rethink, yeah, about like you know, uh, since I just saw Botan already share, right? 2025, correct, not only we're back to the normal, normal, the 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 these are uh, before the COVID-19. So probably need to think about you know this these are uh, probably three years to four years time. So what we can do uh, to recycle, to upcycle, or like, you know, to reuse whatever we have, existing we already have. And also, if they say you really can't use it, then probably we can like, you know, uh, kind of like, just how like water say one, uh, is it possible but got the, like an exchange, you know, with other people who actually need that, then you can buy a new one for the, these are uh, for your new usage and so on. Okay, yes, so thank you so much, Bo Chang. Uh, okay, yeah. let me uh, reintroduce back the all the these are uh, our speaker back then for our Q and A section. Okay, for for you guys, right? Uh, you got any question, right? Please feel free to write into the these are Q and A uh, uh, box here. Uh, so I already see one here. Uh, please feel free to just uh drop the these are uh, your question there. I will forward your discussion to the our speaker uh, 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 respective. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to kick start with the this Q and A, right? Uh, I have this um these are uh, question in my hand here. Uh. Okay, it just just now right today's uh, topic uh, is about a uh, design trend two zero two two right now. But then uh, straight enough, uh, you guys are uh, none of you guys tell us about the design trend. Uh, tell, uh, ready? Uh, water bring us to to circulate to round the world, but we still don't know what is that the design trend. Boteng said a better world, so this is the design trend. <laughs> and also like uh, Peter is like uh, touching a little bit because of the we see we see that uh four four models being showcased uh sourced by net. So can I can I ask you guys throw this question to three of you guys? Uh, can you describe uh, more to the layman term uh to our audience and buyer? Uh, what exactly are uh, the design trend for 2022? Beside the, the, the kind of material, recycled material, but how about the design wise? Is it Scandinavian still will dominate it or like we have the new Zen or what? Probably water first. Then okay, later on. Because I have a because I have a question actually. Uh, oh, asking yeah, me yeah. Uh, online. Should okay. I online yeah. I answer it? No, here? you don't answer that first. Answer the moderator's question first, Water. Oh, yeah? Good. Okay. 
just now watch your question again. Sorry. Yeah, your question, I, the question to you is that, you know, what is the actual design trend for 2022? In terms of design-wise, not in terms of material use, because I, you, you guys have been, been touching a lot of, on the, these are recyclable material, which is that uh, we noted, we already know, uh, but we want to know, like, how about design-wise, so that the buyer down there, the manufacturer down there, you know, the, the end user down there, they, they, they want to buy furniture for next year market, right? Then they will know exactly. You know, uh, normally, normally the trend uh, will go to uh, the follow actually the hotel for me because I'm doing a lot of uh, several hotel projects. Okay, hotel uh, recent hotel projects actually a, a mixture of uh, two to three kind of elements. Okay, so the first element is actually the wood. Okay, and then the second element is actually the right time. So they actually make sure of these two kind of elements. So for me, actually, uh, uh, what I saw in the Trend is actually the uh, a wooden, uh, weaker kind of combination in the design. I'm not sure you guys agree with me. So a little bit of tropical feel. A little bit of tropical feel, ethnic tropical. kind of uh, uh, thing. So, yeah. so I, I I can see something like that. I don't know about others because what I saw is like that. Because uh, normally a project is actually always ahead for one two years, and then the home will follow that kind of design trend. Yeah. How about you, Peter? What what uh, what have you noticed? Definitely, Source Planet. Uh, yeah, Source Planet is not a transcending company for sure, but we are following designers and companies who are trendsetters and try to implement it in our developments. So what we see will be coming, or think will be coming, because of the last eighteen months lockdown, people being uh, have to stay in their houses. <clears throat> we think that will be a focusing on a nurture, uh, nurturing comfort and calmness. So we believe that upholstery will go into more curvy uh, upholstery, not so, so tight lines as we had before, before. We'll have some multifunctional furnitures. Scandinavian design will always be there and I think it'll still go stronger in 2022. And then uh, minimalism as well. So it's actually a mixture of a lot of different trends that we'll be seeing next year. There's not one direction for all of it. I see. So in more to like wider, wider scope, uh, instead of like just one direction, right? Yeah. How about Wochang? Have you, have you noticed anything or not? I actually agree with Peter. And normally if uh, from our point of view, we look at trends from the fashion part. So normally we will actually watch the um, spring summer shows for the next year's like Chanel. The fashion show. Uh? Yes, definitely. Because a lot of industry actually, uh, <laughs> we're always being influenced by the fashion sense. So from there, we can actually see um, all these um, leading brands, they are slowly introduced a uh, colors. They are slowly introduced quite a lot of colors. Maybe we have gone through the pandemic. So now, now I think they are going for something more cheerful, but they still remain very naturalist, I would say. Yeah, because uh, if you look at the fashion world, right, is they, they're introducing actually, uh, like what I'm wearing today, uh, dark green. Uh, so this is one of the one of the in color as well. Mm -hmm. So probably like, you know, you can see that like um, a lot of uh, natural, a lot of like very uh, neutral kind of uh, color palette are coming out, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure whether this is, is it the color trend for next year or not? So Peter, you have something to share with us, I know. <laughs> yeah, but again, we have been uh, looking into a lot of different uh, areas and, and trendsetters. And what we have to talk about is, what I'm presenting now is what the Europeans think will be the trend color for Europe for 2022. We still believe that the white, black and light gray will be the basic tones. And the accent colors would be if uh, you could put my PPT on. Yeah, probably because like otherwise we can't really imagine the colors. Eh? <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is from the magazine called Interior Design uh, Magazine EU. And I have used their uh, color settings or what they believe is going to be the trend colors for next year. So let's see. I'm... Here it is. Butter cream, a uh, very light widening tone, but in a creamy uh, creamy color to give calmness into the house and and in accent colors uh, or sorry for for wooden colors they go into light dark colors or into very uh, sorry deep dark colors or very light colors the middle tones are going to disappear next year 
uh, green quartz pantone is coming into the factory of uh, fabrics. As you said, green is a common color. That's right. for sure. Uh, blue, tech blue is it called? Uh, it's, it's more or less all varieties of blue. It goes from tech blue all, all the way to cobalt blue. Uh, Delai orange. And we are talking accent colors here for accent pieces. We are not talking total refurbishment of a, of a home like this. Uh, military green or golden. Also give calmness to the house and, and make people relax. It's a nice color to look at. Yeah. And then you have the pink. The pink is more to the darker pink, huh? Eh? Yeah, it is a darker pink. Yeah, very nice, beautiful pink. Yeah, we think that is the dominance on the accent colors for next year. Yeah, you look at water's eye, it's coming up, popping up already, see pink. <laughs> okay, then uh, thank you so much, uh, Peter, for the, this uh, color trend, right? So now, I, 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 just, I, I just wonder, because uh, you see, uh, just now we're talking about, you know, the post-COVID era, because, uh, you know, nation is opening up already. I just wonder, like, since uh, Peter, you were talking about the color trend, right? I want to understand also, right? Like, because I, I believe Source by Net, uh, you, 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 you've been having a lot of inquiry, you know, they are, can't wait to have this market open, uh, so they want to source for furniture. So any, any new or special requirement you know, for this post-COVID era? I think I agree with, with what more or less uh, Bo and, and Walter is saying. What people will require, they will change the pattern of buying. I think we'll see less of uh, buying, using, throwing away, throwing away, and more of buying, using, maintain, and using again. Uh, I think that is one of the most important things. Also, yeah. people are looking to buy more sustainable uh, or reclaimed products. Uh, and there's a lot of material out there that is a lot more sustainable than what we are being used today. Uh, teak is not the most sustainable product in the world. It's a scarce source now, but we are still producing furniture in it. So we believe it's going to indirection bamboo, uh, recycle or other types of grass, uh, salvage wood. Uh, it could be from old doors, from building materials, from pallets, um, textile recycled or made out of uh, recycled plastic bottles. Things like this. We are already working now in that direction for, for some of so our So that means uh, actually the, the, the company who actually sourcing for the furniture, they also particular about the material use, eh? Yeah, they are. They are also becoming more and more uh, uh, environmental, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, environmental conscience. Yeah. They're developing that, yeah. Okay. How about Bochang? You, you have any, uh, any ideas or like any inquiry that, like, you know, the design process wise got changes or not, uh, in terms of like designing, because uh, you, are the, you are into the I mean, interior design and also furniture design. So is yeah. there anything changes for the post COVID-19? Um, post, after post COVID-19, definitely people are very aware of opening up their wallet is the first thing. And the second <laughs> one, yeah. Yeah, people are very cautious. So the way we um, try to get people to understand from another point of view is definitely they are going for more quality based products because they are looking for a more durable and longevity of the products. So everything we design now, we are looking at the terms like at least five to 10 years already. It's not like two to three years kind of uh, usage. We are, we are even going into a five to 10 years kind of usage. So from our side, the way we can implement our, from our profession wise, then we have to think further, further from here, because if we are going to the things that water is presented just now to apply it into now, it will be very, very challenging. So what we can start off is like we preventing a lot of waste. We go for good quality of material and fully utilize it based on the standard size provider. We don't left over anything whatever left over then maybe we can create something else to actually fully utilize everything and maximize the profit la. <laughs> very difficult you want to maximize profit yes. then you want to be sustainable huh? it's difficult but this is a great challenge mm -hmm. and this is a new trend uh. okay by the way i have from here the q and a box here right uh get this from sweden you say you have a few questions about sustainable uh sustainable future for design, right? You want to ask water? Can you please uh, list out your question? Because I, it is too open-ended, really. We can't really ask that. Uh, we can't really 
uh, answered it. So for me, what the one from Australia for you? Okay, how do how do stay on trend with product but also promote sustainability? Yeah, this is a very good question from Australia, Sydney. This is from Kylie Grillo. So what is your take? Okay, uh, actually, is she a buyer? Uh, yes, she's a buyer from Cola Sleep, product manager. So is it? It's uh, uh, going back to going back to her. So everything that he she buy has to be actually uh, sustainable, FFC, BEFC, or circular economy. So it's actually going back to her. So she uh. have to be very careful of what she is actually buying now. So she have to think about <coughs> the thing that she buy and uh, or she ask the factory to do is actually uh, not harming the earth. So it's actually from her. I can't give you, I can't give the solution now actually. So it's, it's actually, it's from us, all of us that do this, the, what we call, uh, have that kind of thinking and actually do want to hurt the mother of, that's the three months. I don't know, uh, uh, she actually satisfied of my answer or not. <laughs> uh, as a moderator, I'm not really satisfied with your answer. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, but the way because I think it's important, uh, it's important of uh, we must know that these are uh, the market needs, uh, what is the market needs, uh, uh, and of course, uh, because I we still back to talk about business now, right? So, business is very important, uh, and also to take care of the sustainability as well. Uh, okay, then, uh, these are we have this another question is from our uh, where is it from? Okay, from Malaysia, uh, from Malaysia, so uh. These are from our friend here called Karen Yi. It's uh, from S SJY Furniture. Uh, actually, they are the manufacturer. As want to ask uh, what is actually the design trend they want to you know, look into that for next year. If they say they want to participate in the, this uh, exhibition. Yeah. So uh, this one, who want to take? Probably, I think uh, Peter will be the good one. And later on, Botang probably you can contribute a little bit. But I think we already answered that. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what they means, huh? Okay, <laughs> back to the nature. Okay, take care of nature. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, follow the these uh, I think. I think. Uh, no, but it's, as as I said, let less less liner production, more more rounded, uh, more soft lines in the designs. I think that that's what's coming, uh, and that's what everybody's talking about. Yes. Yeah. I think. And, and brief, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I believe okay. another point will be the innovation on the material usage. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be very interesting, and I be I believe in the coming years that we will be able to see a lot of different kind of material, including additive materials, into the use of furniture. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now I got that these are uh, these uh, question here already. Uh, so probably I will read it out to uh or um, you guys so so see who who can take this one. Yeah. Okay. I live and work in Sweden, and also from what I see here, people are consuming a lot of furnitures that are designed and manufacturer uh, in the global south, uh, uh, they have improved the design quality as well as the material and also the technology uh, to manufacturing them. However, the chain and also logistics uh, for recycling, okay, uh, upcycling and also management of waste uh, is not yet managed properly. How and what do you think can help to fix this logistic of furniture waste yeah, to make the recycle easier. And considering that the logical uh, the logistic fees today are much higher than uh, after the pandemic. Yes, exactly. Uh okay, is truly and like a hundred percent agree on what your point of view because I think when we talk about recycling and upcycling, usually will be higher cost than using the normal material, which is a lot of manufacturing having this uh, challenge as well. Uh, not saying they do not want to take care of that, but they are having difficulty to take care. La. And also later on, I also got this question, uh, since I graduated already asked, uh, it's about the logistic cost, cost as well. So I, I believe, uh, as you see, like water, you are involving in this uh, manufacturing uh, of the furniture. You're also you know, helping people as a, con a consultant. Sourced by net, I believe your client also having this challenge. Uh. So what is your take on this question? I mean, how to help... Uh, or make it upcycle, recycle process easier. Because I, I can see, right, government trying to do something, but still not there yet. So what, what is both of your 
point of point of view. Peter, you want to you want to go first? No, but it's it's the thing with furniture is they're very big products to handle. Uh, it, it's not like bottles. You know, we Scandinavia have a system for recycling uh, glass bottles. So that's easy. It's a small thing. You put it into a machine and you get your money back. So uh, a system could be developed, maybe going in that direction. Of course, not machines or whatever, but in order to organize uh, all recycling and, and how to bring back your used furniture in a way. Yes, I think I think we can do something like just like I, I did I did mention uh, the swapping of furniture like because uh, you know like nowadays there is a lot of designer wear and also a lot of like secondhand or we call it pre-love kind of uh, luxury product or even the day-to-day no -day product they are doing the swapping uh, so probably this is one of the idea that can, that can I think it's more to the community itself uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what? Uh, how about the? Uh, you know, in terms of like manufacturer, how how could manufacturer help uh, on this? Uh? Oh, uh, they have to. Every time when you start manufacturing, they have to think about. Oh, yeah, this product. Okay. The okay. For example, sofa. Sofa is actually the most headache one. Okay. Big, chunky, everything wrap up. Okay. You see when you start. You when you go overseas. When we study overseas, you see. Uh, 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 we collect the sofa, somebody throw away in our rented room. <laughs> yeah. So, so the sofa is actually the, the, the biggest headache. Okay. Chair is okay, still maybe you can pick out and then you pick out one piece by piece and throw away. Okay, sofa. When you think about how to produce, how to design a sofa, that can be taken out parts by parts. Okay. So like the structure, okay. Because like a modular um, system. Yes, mod like modular system. Okay. So it, uh, this, that one can be used, they can use actually by actually uh, a bioplastic. Okay. The plastic made from a plant. Okay. So, but that is actually very costly. Okay. Because when you talk about plastic, you need a mold. Molding cost is very expensive, but it's actually one time painful. So you can use again in the future. Yeah. So, and then uh, uh, foam. Foam is another big headache, okay? As you know, foam actually made from a petrochemical, okay? Foam is actually very hard to actually, uh, 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 what we call, uh, resolve, very hard, okay? So this is actually, then money involved again, we have to go to do a research, okay? To do a foam that is actually biodegradable, or maybe in the future, when you want to, uh, 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 do it again when take out the form and then uh, use again. Like fabric is actually not a problem. Fabric you can take out again, okay, and then use it from something else, something else. Actually, the most headache one is actually the, 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 the form. Okay, and then you think about how this sofa actually knock it down, can be knocked down. So the sofa is very bulky. When you knock it down, you will save some space into the container or in the truck that was that will save uh, a, a bit more of money. Okay. okay. So, but, but, but the thing is that right, the, the, these are biodegradable material, right? When you talk about this term, I always think about the plastic bag. We always, you know, get it from supermarket, where not. Then you keep it for a while, then you are like, huh, or like, you know, melted like that. Uh, then it become like uh, chips like that, correct? Not? So that is a kind of material uh, you are mentioning, or is a different kind? Different kind, different kind. That one is a plastic bag here. Uh, like recently... Then, then, then I will buy the kind of material. Otherwise, uh, if I buy, can you imagine I buy a sofa with the kind of material, right? then after I go holiday, come back, then everything melts. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> it can stay for a few so years. Okay, so that means that uh, the technology actually is quite capable to produce that kind of this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So like recently, there's a, there's a student from uh, USM that designed uh, yep. for, actually for Dyson. I think she won the second place. Okay, oh. she actually uh, uh, using all those throw away limau, uh, oranges, oranges, fiber, okay, uh, laminate fiber, all those put all those uh, uh, waste fiber and put it in again and fabricate it as a leather. Ah. And she won the, the what we call the Dyson Good Design second place. Wow, nice, nice. Uh, so I think a uh, student from US, and I think you can search, I've forgotten the name. Okay, she's a, oh. uh, she's Malaysian, uh, uh, well complete, Chinese, complete Muslim Chinese. Well done, well done. I think, I think, I think he or he or she, he or she, 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 she,
by oh, using handbag. The, yes, she make a handbag by using the product. She actually very uh go and check it check her out. Uh, I think Dyson website will have. Oh, and that's then, cool. Uh, and then the in Philippines, they use the pineapple uh fiber to make leather as well. I saw that. Ah, that's 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 uh, that's, 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 that's that's very good alternative. Uh -huh. Okay, next question. Mm. Uh, I think this one can uh Bo Chan can help to answer this one. Also from uh this our Gerdis uh, from this uh, Sweden, he said, how can design impact uh, the consumer pattern? Yeah, since many corporations today are putting the responsibility of recycling or waste handling to the consumer. That means like now, like yeah, we can see like you know, a lot of time, uh, even like you go to shop for the clothing, right? They will tell you, you know, to recycle your, your product and so on, right? So how a design can impact on that? Um, I believe um, definitely with this kind of initiative, it definitely impacts a lot of consumer patterns. As if we are looking at EU customer uh, spending awareness, they want to buy something that is recyclable. They want to buy something that is repairable. They want to buy something that is um, more simple and easy for them they can do it themselves and i would like to address just now the Gadi's first question also on the logistic i actually always have an idea if we are looking at the like um the questions on the logistic side of the furniture and just now water also mentioned on especially on sofa and we are actually doing sofa <laughs> quite a lot quite a lot so so um the innovations kicks into my part is um if you realize nowadays, a lot of mattresses are being packed as a vacuum. They vacuum it and then they pack just like one whole king size bed just into a row. And for me, this concept actually is applicable to sofa. I believe with the advancement of technology, we will be able to achieve this kind of packaging even for a bulky furniture like sofa. Hey, yeah. but, but again, this depends on the material use, right? Yes, and the yeah. material used for so far is mainly foam and yes, a lot of different I, I, types I, I, of foams. Yeah, most of the time I yeah. see those mattresses you, you were mentioned, right? they are using the latex. latex. So it's a very Correct. easy for them to vacuum it out. Right? Yes, okay. so, so, so okay. That, that's probably will be the coming innovations. Yeah, I think this is what be the designer can be impact on, 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 on this issue. Right? Yes, now okay. we have to think of packaging. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We not only design our packaging, also we need to think about that. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's because uh, it, it really help uh, the, the entire world to be more synchronized uh, in terms of thinking, design thinking, you know. Because design thinking is giving solution to all. Uh, so that that will be the good one. Okay, yeah, next question very important be, now. Yes. Next question will be for our Peter, I think. Okay, this one is from our Brunei. So Brunei, this is our, let me see the name, uh, uh, Joanne Neo asking, right, what are the upcoming trends uh, and design for furniture for Asia market, very specifically Asia market? <laughs> <laughs> because I think, I think uh, she already I, saying, like Europe, Europe. Uh, so I, 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 I still believe that the Scandinavian trend will uh, grow into Asia more than it is right now. I think we'll see less bulky items coming in. Um, that would be my suggestion and, and to work in that direction. Mm. Okay, so that means that you are still believing that like, Scandinavia will be, it will be coming to Asia more. Huh? Okay, it, now we have very interesting it, it, it of this. Is, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for water side, it's like very tropical, you know, because like the, the indication from the hotel industrial and for our source by neck, that will be something very simple, very, you know, slick kind of design. Okay, cool. But this is, again, um, it's all uh, from our point of view. Lah, huh? So for you guys as a references. Lah, huh? Okay, now we have this uh, Q&A box here. Jackie Tan also asking, are sustainable furniture expensive? <laughs> so, Walter, you want to take this? They are expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. I do agree. <laughs> They are okay. now it's expensive. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, whatever it, sustainable it, one are going to be cost you a lot, lah, but not 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 really very, very expensive. Uh, but uh, I, I think like we kind of need to live in this kind of lifestyle already, correct? Now, now even mobile phone, uh, you, you you look at the new mobile phone is crazy, like you can buy a laptop already. Yeah. Uh, so furniture is okay. I think furniture can last longer time. Uh. Okay. Now no, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna be more 
it's going to be more expensive because there's not a system in place for recycling or research mm -hmm. or whatever. That's why it's going to be more expensive. If that system was up and running, I'm not sure it'll be more expensive. Correct, but because like, we talk about all this, right? Like, how about like you, know, you, you look at the next year economic outlook? Uh, what, is, what is your take, uh, Peter? It's going to be good, you know, people are going to spend a lot or not? Because that's how Boateng also uh, did the research saying, right? People are going to spend money already. Let's open their wallet and like spend. I, I, th I think it will change a bit to what we have seen the last 18 months, where people were, people were locked in their houses and were tired of looking on their high what they had in their house, wants to change something because the world is opening up now, so we have competition from traveling agencies. People can all of a sudden start traveling again. Uh, and I think that would take some of the, the money away from people have been using on furniture in the future. It's still a huge market there. People are still want to refurbish their home and, and make their home shine. So, but I don't, see, I don't think we'll see the growth we have had over the last 18 months in the same, let's say, steep curve as we've seen it. Okay, but how about like, you know, since uh, the economic outlook is going to be good, uh, like you guys are saying uh, people are going to spend, right? So which market they are focusing? Because the other day I have a very interesting conversation with Bo Chang, right? Actually, he said like, you know, the market now uh, actually uh, post-COVID-19, uh, hospitality is going to be uh, the next in thing and big thing, right? In terms of economy side. Like, so, Bojang, you want to share with us about this, this info? Uh, actually, in terms of the booming industry, uh, yeah. furniture industry is not on the list. However, um, yeah, but, yeah uh, it's not set. <laughs> I, think, I think there's always a will. There's always a will. So, if we're looking into the pharmaceutical, hospitality in terms of not like general hotels, but it's more into the hospital hospitality. So people might visit across the country to visit the facilities of a hospital because these are the things that are advancing uh, throughout the technology. So what I would see from a furniture industry is how can we provide some things or some of the furniture products that could complement to those industry? Like what are those uh, furniture being used in medical industry, pharmaceutical industry? Post-hospitalization also another very important part that we always miss nobody is really really doing a good solutions for that part of the uh, industry so that is what um, from our side we can really contribute to that industry and we can be also the next booming industry as well correct correct because i think that's how you also share about the you know the uv light at the in the hospital right they will also exactly. can incorporate with that as well right correct exactly yeah so like it, it looks like you know like uh, most of the industry are, are going to be booming. Uh, uh, particularly, wow, okay. particularly the, uh, the dog also agree, huh, Peter? <laughs> particularly, I think, yes. in the hospitality. <laughs> okay, now, uh, and also a big challenge here because I, I believe everybody also knows, as you see, all the manufacturers and buyers are uh, in the, these, uh, these uh, when we're here, the logistic fees uh, and also the transportation fee actually are uh, increased a lot. Uh, so do you guys see any chance for them to reduce in the near future or it going to be up? Because that this morning, right, I heard from BBC that these uh, oil prices is, is not going down anytime soon. As you see, this uh, winter are coming up. Uh, so a lot of countries, they need this. So what, what, what is both of your take on uh, water and also uh, Peter? I think that... Uh... The retail groups might try to look for production closer to uh, their markets uh, uh, because today the difference or the, the cost rate are enormous. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's totally crazy. It's gone up from two, three thousand to 14 to 16,000 for a 40 foot container. And, you know, you can pay more for the production locally than you can importing it because the price will still be competitive. So I think that's what we're going to see in, in the nearest future. If the prices are not coming down, that means I. Uh, that means I. Uh, is is good to source locally actually, right? Yeah. Yes, because yeah. I see. Right. I can see. I'm, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's good, but I say it's a very likability possibility for for our clients to do that, or for us yes. to do it for the clients. Yes, because I can see like source from net. Like that's how you are uh, in your presentation. You guys have a very wide network, huh? So yeah, for we me, spread, I... we spread all over Asia, Eastern Europe, and Brazil. 
So we have the possibility of making our designs produced in the near areas to our clients. Yeah, near to the client, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, how about your uh, water? Any? Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, I agree with Peter. <coughs> okay, now because I'm a, 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 we do a lot of projects and uh, some stuff from China to Australia. Now, Australia is coming to look at buying from Indonesia because they're only next, only uh, uh, not so far away. Okay, so so they are looking at it because compared to the freight charges, it's actually uh, they save a lot. Okay, because Australia is actually a, uh, uh, not a country that they can produce cheap stuff because their workmanship is very expensive. <laughs> they pay one. Hey, hour I think I think now everywhere workmanship is not cheap already. Correct, no? No, I, uh, Australia is super expensive. One hour. Yeah, because I think you, I think now even grapes thirty thirty dollars or or so. $40 per hour. <laughs> hey, no, but I think I think even like previously, when, whenever we mention make in China, they thought it was cheap, but now China is not well, no China is not cheap anymore now. China is yeah, actually no, not cheap anymore no. now, actually. So yeah. I think labor is generally is uh, I think it's expensive anyway. But since that we're touching this, right, out of curiosity, right, uh Peter, uh yeah. you know, right, like you know, which country actually not, right now, uh, which country actually is the most popular uh, on demand one people want to like uh, I want to make in this country the furniture. Uh, Vietnam but, is uh, Vietnam has actually for the last two years been uh, the biggest exporter to uh, to America. Oh, Vietnam, huh? Yeah. Vietnam, yes. Oh, surprisingly, uh, I thought, so, I thought um, China, no, eh? no, 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 Vietnam no, no, is no. a very strong coming uh, market for sure. Uh, it is up in the top already, but I think it will continue growing. I'm more or less convinced mm -hmm. about that. But also I believe Malaysia and Indonesia also have good opportunities for the future. They yep. produce different type of furniture, which can be produced in China, but with uh, everything in mind, I think they will try to move it to uh, Malaysia and Indonesia. Also in order to spread the risk, you know, during the COVID, uh, China had locked down, uh, Vietnam had locked down, I think people are looking to spread and have more than one country where they can uh, seize their products from. Ah, to be sure okay. to, to maintain uh, a steady flow of products. Well, so it looks like uh, Vietnam is coming back uh, because uh, Vietnam used to be very strongly. After that, they rest for a while. Now they are coming back strongly. Uh. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. The Q&A box here, we got one. Wow, well, uh, a name. HJHKJ. Uh, uh, I, I, I hope I, I can pronounce it. Okay, if the sustainable furniture is the trend, okay, will it affect those non-sustainable furniture manufacturers? It's a good question, actually. So, will it be, you know, affected or not? Walter, you want to take this? Oh, Since uh, it says sustainable is a trend, my right? So, will it be affected, actually, the traditional furniture, non-sustainable? Uh, it will, but not this one. Yeah. <laughs> it will. yeah, I believe so. Like, because they see, like, even the recycle bag also take a while uh, to yes. everybody practicing this. Uh. Uh, right. You compare the UK, uh, UK yeah. uh, uh, richer people, right? So the UK people say, hey, this product is actually sustainable, uh, a bit expensive. Uh, they buy, they buy. <laughs> they will prefer yeah. the one that is sustainable. Okay, it depends on the market as well. But well, I, think, I think, yeah, Peter, you say? I think it's a process, uh, uh, process because you cannot change it from today till tomorrow. It takes a long time. So I believe the factories who are only into conventional production needs to think about how they can get closer to uh, sustainability, reclaiming, and so on. It's not going to happen over one year, two years. It, it takes a period for it to happen, but it will happen, and it needs to happen. I'm, I'm sure about that. Yeah, I think I think I think important uh, is like uh, uh, as a manufacturer, as a designer, as the this uh, sourcing sourcing uh, agency, right? We need to cultivate this into the market first. Uh, otherwise, you know, people still not aware because a uh, good example is uh, like the recycle bag. Uh, I, I still remember like those days when people are charging, uh, first starting charging, people are bringing bringing the the recycle bag. After a while, then they they already get you. This is the norm already. So I think uh, sustainability design also same thing. But uh, the main challenge here, I think we still need to keep the cost low. Otherwise, it's quite tough for the consumer as well, as well as for buyer and so on. Okay, HJHK, 
KJ <laughs> still got one more question. While the particle board furniture still in trend in the coming few years, ah, particle particle board looks like water is busy. So, uh, Peter, you want to take then later on, Bo Cheng, you want to put uh, your input as well. So yeah, I, I, I think it is, I think it'll still be there, of course. Uh, yeah, right. it's, it's a cheap it's a cheap way to producing, but uh, so it will be there. I'm sure about that. Yeah, I agree. But also, I think, that, yeah. sorry, Bo. Ah, it's okay. Uh, I, I think that if we set up a system for recycling furniture, that's also a good way to use the recycling wood into uh, because we cannot if you have a small table you cannot recycle that into another piece of furniture you have to need uh, recycle into some kind of chips that can be used again so that's my opinion yeah yeah i think so i think i think it's quite right but how about your take uh, Botang? yeah because i think particle board is also categorized as one of a recycled material and more sustainable like yeah. Yeah. so i believe particle board will still in the trend but yeah. it's only the treatments like nowadays they create a lot of different shapes a lot of uh, different agings the treatments like flooded panels so I believe that will be the coming text. Uh. So we can still um, agree to that particle board will still be in the trend. Just yeah. the different treatments. Yeah. Water, how about your how about your take? Particle board will be in trend or not? Uh, it will be because uh, uh, it's something like a, a, what we call a evergreen. More of a not so composite composite product. So I'm going to make it yeah. So I think it, 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 it will be the trend. It will be the okay. trend. Because uh, soon, Solid wood will become a luxury. Solid wood yeah. will become luxury because a uh, uh, tree grows very slow, and then uh, uh, demand is too uh, uh, over than what we can plant. So uh, uh, wood, solid wood, will become a luxury. Right? Yeah, especially like now climate change. Uh, you see, like uh, we got wildfire, burn down all the tree. Then we got the flood. Uh, the great flood in many many countries already. So I think this is uh, this is a uh, Alarm lah, huh? it's a wake up call for a lot of us to think about this. Huh? Because I, I think um, very important that today, uh, our topic, even though it's a design trend for 2022, uh, but we we'll touch a little bit on this uh, climate change, touch a little bit on this sustainability because uh, we want to play our part uh, as a designer, as uh, these, uh, what we call that, uh, the Asia's biggest uh, um, furniture uh, platform, uh, uh, MIFS, uh, we wanted to tell people that this is an important issue. Lah. Because I think uh, we are slightly over the, our this, uh, time already. So I would like to say thank you so much for Peter all the way from Dubai. Pleasure. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for inviting also. me. <laughs> thank you so much for you guys uh, you know, uh, to, to share with us uh, this insightful sharing session uh, because uh, this is important for all of us here. Uh. All right. Thank you very much, uh, guys. And uh, also now I want to... Uh, Say thank you uh, to all the audience as well. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your uh, these are present as well. So back to you, honey. <laughs> Hi, thank you everyone. Thank you, Dr. Eric Leong for moderating this session and also to all our speakers for the wonderful session. And also uh, thank you everyone for tuning to this webinar. Hope you enjoyed today's session. We would like to invite you to join our community. Follow us on our social media. Once again, thank you for tuning in and we will see you again next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. And Bye. if you have yet to register for the Me Friendiverse 2021, kindly register at www.mefriendiverse.com to experience the online furniture sourcing. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.